Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio and thank you so much for tuning in uh, to this video today. Uh, we are gonna be talking about the Synology NAS, specifically how you can run a virtual machine. That's right, you heard it correct. A virtual machine or a virtual server or even a desktop version uh, directly on your Synology NAS, right? Yes, you can actually use your Synology NAS to run a Windows or some other sort of operating system directly on it. It is absolutely brilliant. We're gonna be talking about that today. Please subscribe, clicking on that subscription button and the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So let's get onto that video right now. All right, so I've got myself a Synology NAS. Uh, it's a fairly new Synology NAS that has recently been released. You may be running a Synology NAS and it could be an older one that may still be okay, but make sure that you do have the operating system updated, the actual software update as latest as possible. Because if you start watching this video and you find that you cannot configure or set up the virtual software, on your Synology NAS, it could be because your Synology NAS is not compatible. So you'll have to check that out first. Because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going onto our Synology NAS, we're gonna be opening up the store where you go and get applications, the app store essentially, and we're gonna be installing some virtual software onto our Synology NAS. So if that is unavailable or you have trouble installing it or running it, it could be because of the version. Anyway, that's a bit of an introduction. Let's now log in to our Synology NAS. We're gonna be connecting from my computer, logging into the Synology NAS, logging in as an administrator, and then going through those steps. So we're logged in. Here is our Synology NAS. Now I'm running a newer Synology NAS, but early versions should do the trick as well, as long as you're running a newer version of the OS. And uh, we're gonna look at how to get a virtual machine running. Now, of course, you need to know how to log into your Synology NAS first, get those admin credentials, log in, and here we are. Now, of course, the other thing you want to do is you want to have enough capacity on your Synology NAS to be able to actually install the uh, the operating system that you want to install. Uh, and you need to have a fairly fast Synology NAS. That way your, your VM that you're going to be installing uh, is not going to be running too poor because when we are configuring the VM, you're going to have to allocate some CPU and RAM and hard drive space to that particular VM which is going to then be shared with the resources that are on your Synology NAS. So if you've got a slower Synology NAS, if you're running out of space, then that's gonna directly affect the actual running of your VM. So get something that's pretty well, um, but you can use this just for testing. So maybe you can actually lower the specs of your VM first and then see how it goes. And if it runs great, excellent, but then you can also later on increase those resources uh, just by powering the VM off and then just pump up some of those resources and then try it again and see how that goes. So uh, we're logged in right here. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to go into the package center, which is this area right here, and we need to install some software. Now your sort, you may be familiar with this, but package center is essentially where you go and get yourself all of your uh, apps for your Synology NAS. And we're gonna search for uh, virtual. So just type in virtual into here and press enter. And you see that this particular icon shows up. This is the app, Virtual Machine Manager, okay? So this is the app that we are going to install. You can see a bit more information about what it does uh, and what its purpose is. So this is the app that we're gonna use. It's actually a Synology application. So it's native to the Synology um, brand of products, which makes it very, very easy and make sure that compatibility is where it needs to be as well. So let's go ahead and install that. Uh, that may take just a little bit of time. And then once it's installed, we can then go and start configuring our VM. Now, the great thing about the Synology NAS is you can install VMs across the range. So if you've got Linux, if you've got Windows, you can actually go and install the, uh, the VM of that particular version. Now, what you will need to do is you'll need to get yourself the installation file or the ISO file for that VM. So if you're going to install um, Linux, you're going to get maybe CentOS or Ubuntu, um, or Red Hat or something like that, or Kali Linux. Um, if you're on Windows, you wanna install Windows 10 or one of the server editions, you're gonna to need to get the ISO file for those files first. So you need to go and download those off the internet. Um, the Linux side generally gonna be for free, except for certain versions. 
and Windows. It may be for free if you've already purchased it. Otherwise, you'll need to buy yourself that uh, version. But you need that ISO file, a bootable ISO file, um, to be able to install the operating system. Without that, you can't really proceed further. So that has uh, now installed. Okay, so you'll see that um, under my um, main menu, it's actually listed now in here, Virtual Machine Manager. So we can go and open that up. And here we are presented with just our wizard. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna select next. Uh, here, it's gonna ask me, check if the host settings are suitable for running virtual machines. So it's gonna give you a bit of a status here, essentially around your um, w whether your NAS can actually run a host um, virtual machine or not, okay? So in my case, these first two are enabled and these next two are eligible. If you have an issue with one of these, it doesn't mean that it won't run. If it says it's not eligible or it's disabled, you can turn those on um, and you just have to sort of check essentially what they are and what the impact may be. But in my case, we're all good. So we can select next. Now it's gonna ask me what volume do you want to install this on? Now, of course, the, the whole purpose of the NAS is that you have a whole bunch of disks. You select those disks, you create a volume out of those disks. So in my case, I've just got the one volume. If you wanna have more of a dedicated space, perhaps create a separate dedicated volume for your storage of your VM. So this is where do you want the VMs to live, to be stored? So I'm gonna select my primary volume right there, ensuring that I've got sufficient capacity. So I've got plenty of capacity to be able to do what I need to do. Next, and from here, we are now gonna be presented with, once it does open up, it's obviously taking a little bit of time to load there. So it is actually creating the necessary um, settings on that um, volume, where it looks, looks good there, finish. Um, here is my NAS, it's called Aguero Synology. My CPU percentage right now, so how much is currently being used, how much RAM I've got um, available and used, and how is my LAN performing? So my up, upload and my download speeds on my uh, network, okay? Uh, virtual machines, currently I don't have any. And of course, storage, we've just got the one volume that we just allocated previously, okay? Now, of course, we need to go and create a virtual machine now, but just be a little bit aware around some of the areas here on the left. This is grab this and drag it down so you can see a little bit better. So on the left side, you've got an overview, you've got virtual machines, you've got your clusters, you've got storage, you've got network, uh, and you can go and configure a whole bunch of stuff in here. Network, um, if you've got multiple ports on your Synology NAS, that is great. And I would actually go and enable those network points and run cables into your Synology NAS, have them all active because the more ports you've got, the better load balancing you've got of your VMs. If you've got multiple VMs, they're not all using the network traffic of one network point. They can be shared across the other ones. The other good thing is things such as failover and redundancy. So if one network point fails, your VM doesn't fail, it can just sort of bump over and start using another network point, another network connection. So if you do have more than one, you can go and do that. In my case, you'll see I've got one host and I've got two network interfaces. Um, which is fine. We're not gonna go into too much detail, but here is the two that I've got, and they're both currently plugged in and both working, so I do already have that set up for me. Virtual machines, it's blank because there's nothing in there yet. Here is my storage. You can go and create and add more storage if you so choose to. Uh, cluster, we don't have anything really set up other than our standard by default cluster that's created, and then virtual machine. So let's go ahead and create a virtual, machi virtual machine right here. We're gonna select create. And we're now gonna be asked, what sort of operating system is this? Is this a Microsoft Windows? Is this a Linux? Is this something different? Uh, so in our case, we're going to build a Windows 10 VM. So we're gonna select Microsoft Windows and select Next. And just making sure that it's gonna select it on this storage. So this is the storage that we're going to be installing it onto. So we're leaving that as the default and say Next. Uh, what do you want to call the VM? Okay, so you need to give the VM a specific name, a, a name that is uh, relevant. So I'm gonna actually call this VM, this is a uh, Win Server. I'm gonna call it Win 10 Server Test. Okay, so I'm just using this for testing purposes, but of course you give your, um, your Windows 10 VM a relevant name that is relevant for you or whatever VM that you may be building. Um, how many CPUs do you wanna be able to allocate to that VM? So one, two, three, or four. Remember, this is now going to be using a chunk of the CPU 
from your Synology NAS. So I think four is probably a bit too much for Windows 10, so I'm just gonna select two. And how much RAM do you wanna to allocate to it? Okay, so I've got an option of one, two, three, or four gig. Um, if I had more RAM available on my Synology NAS, I could allocate more. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that as two gig of RAM of memory. And again, rem reminding you that you can go and actually uh, increase this later on if you so choose to. Here is our video card that we're gonna be using. We're gonna just leave that as the default video card. Next, virtual disk. Now, of course, your Windows 10 has got a C drive. Any server that you build, whether that be Linux or Windows 10, or even on a Mac computer has some sort of a disk drive, your primary hard drive. And this is asking you how big do you want that to be? Okay, so how big, and of course that'll take a chunk from that volume that we allocated, which had, in my case, had terabytes, but how much do you want your, your VM to actually see? So I'm gonna give it just a standard of 80 gigs. So an 80 gig uh, C drive hard drive, and you can go and change that later on if you so choose to. Next, what is the network? We're just leaving it as the default VM network. We can just have it to be not connected for now. So we're just gonna leave that as the default. And next, Okay, now this is the guest agent. Okay, so this is uh, for drivers of Windows virtual machines. So by default, of course, the Synology doesn't understand the Microsoft, the Windows operating system. So it's asking you to go and download this particular piece of software to actually ensure that there's proper compatibility um, between those two environments. Um, when you're taking snapshots of running virtual machines and other things like that as well. So we're gonna select download. It's gonna go out to the internet and download that particular guest tool software for my Windows virtual machine. It's done. And then you'll see it's actually listed it right here, additional ISO file. This is the file that was just downloaded. Now here, the very first step is the ISO file for boot up. So now this is where you point this particular um, instance that we're creating to the ISO that you have downloaded. So you have to go and find that ISO. Now, what I'd recommend, of course, if you've downloaded this onto your PC, onto your Mac, whatever computer that you're using to connect to your Synology, uh, you need to upload that onto the Synology, preferably. go in, so, so go and upload it. Um, use the file station, which is right up here. Okay, you can open up your file station and actually upload the file. So go and upload the file to your Synology NAS to a location that is relevant for you. And then you go and navigate to it, okay? So I'm gonna go and select Browse. I've got all of my stuff under data applications, and then I've got a folder called Microsoft, and I've got Windows 10 right there. And the particular version that I'm gonna be using is this one right here, and I'm gonna select that. So now I've got my Windows 10 ISO selected. Auto start, I'm gonna to say to yes, because I do want it to start automatically. Um, you can set it to no, but I like as soon as I boot up, let's make it start automatically. Uh, the BIOS, do you want a legacy or UEFI? So this is really depending on the operating system that you're going to be installing the ISO itself. So we're gonna leave that as the BIOS because BIOS is what's generally used with uh, Microsoft. Um, and the, the rest we'll just leave as the default, okay? We're not gonna change anything there. So let's select next. Now, assigning permissions. So who do you want to um, have permissions to be able to on and off? We're gonna say admin and apply. So in my case, I had it left as powered off. So now it's ready to go. Um, you'll see there's a few, you know, it's highlighted. It says powered off and there's a few, you know, bit of information on the bottom showing me what this is doing, the virtual disk, the network that it's going to be using. So now we're gonna go and select power on. Now in the drop down option, of course, you've got a few different options. You've got power on, you've got shutdown, you've got forced shutdown, you've got restart, suspend, resume. Now that is now preparing, okay? And you'll see that things now start to spin up. Now. This area right here is to actually connect and bring up a window where you can see what's going on. So we're gonna select connect. You see it's opened up a separate tab and here is my Windows logo. So this is a good sign. If this has been seen, if you're seeing this, it means that it has found the ISO and it has booted the ISO and now Windows 10, the actual installation or the actual setup is actually now beginning. Now, if this didn't work for you, perhaps it's saying that the disk is not found or please insert or the ISO is corrupted. It's because perhaps the ISO that you have got is not valid. Uh, it's corrupted or perhaps it's not a bootable ISO. So your ISO has to be bootable. Essentially, um, you know, the same way that you would plug it into a USB stick, into a computer, you should be able to boot from that. Um, so we're just gonna let this run through and start up. 
Looks good. Everything has now loaded and now we just are presented with the standard Windows installation screen. So now we go through the standard steps of selecting the language, the time, the currency, and now the installation begins. So it's gonna do a standard setup. So we'll let this run through now. Your computer would have, well, the actual VM itself would have rebooted a couple times. Now, if it uh, did get stuck on anywhere, I have seen where sometimes it can get stuck when it's rebooting. Here's a couple things that I would do. Um, back in here, you could actually shut down the VM completely, just get it turned off. And under the edit area right here, under others, get that ISO file for boot up unmounted, then okay, and then boot it up again. And if it does happen again, just give it another restart and it should be fine and it should be presented with uh, this screen right here. And then you can continue your installation. We are logged in, excellent, all done. And of course, you don't have to just use Windows 10. You can use other versions of Windows. You could even use Linux uh, and install Ubuntu, CentOS, other versions of Linux right on here. Uh, but of course, remembering to be limited, that you're limited by the actual capacity of your NAS. So you've either got it running or you're gonna be running it in the future once you finish this video, but running a virtual machine on the Synology NAS. It is absolutely brilliant. And you know what? The great thing about this is that you don't need to go get yourself another computer. You don't have to get yourself a spare computer or buy another computer to run another operating system. You can run it straight onto your Synology NAS right out of the box, as long as you're running the right version of Synology NAS, the right software, and that you've got an appropriate ISO file for the installation of your operating system. Thanks again for spending the time. I really, really appreciate it. Please like, comment, subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss any of my video releases. And please do also check out some of my other videos around the Synology and other sort of technology so that you can stay up to date with what's happening in IT.